Apparently, when we're very young, when we first start to see things, um, we see things upside down, but our brain corrects that. Um, I've never researched that, I just heard it somewhere, I think in high school science class, but I, I think it's true. Um, now that's an interesting thought, isn't it? The way that we're seeing things, our senses, um, could distort things, and we have to correct the, distortion, the distorting effect of our senses. Um, now that's one obvious example of how seeing and perceiving are not necessarily the same thing. Now, you can go a few steps further, um, especially if you use your imagination and if you go into things like thought experiments. Um, that's where, you know, it's one of the reasons why I like to quote science fiction a lot, horror fiction in particular. And a quote that I've used before is from, is one I'm going to read right now, from Stephen King's I Am the Doorway. Uh, an astronaut goes out into space and uh, ends up getting into a nasty accident and is permanently disabled. And he also has, um, in uh, one of his hands, he's got a bunch of eyes that have appeared there. And he can see out of those eyes. But what he sees out of those eyes um, is quite different than what he sees out of his own eyes, the eyes that he's got on his face. Uh, the reason for that is, of course, that the eyes have been implanted by an alien intelligence into his body. They want to see what Earth is like. And he's come close to them. I think it's the planet Venus he went to. And um, when they're able to see through those eyes, the aliens back on Venus, I guess, um, what they see of Earth is horrible to them. Uh, they hate it, they fear it, they loathe it. Everything that we do on Earth is um, an obscenity to them. Our furniture is horrible. Our, um, our way of life is horrific. We ourselves are a pile of weird, incomprehensible, and dangerous monsters. Um, it's basically a very different perception of our everyday reality uh, than what we're used to perceiving it as. Um, Stephen King uses an interesting example of a guy convalescing in a seaside um, home for disabled people. and Or I think it's actually not even a home, It's I think it's a, a cabin. It's very pleasant, like almost a stereotypically pleasant uh, American environment. And the aliens see this, and they hate it. They can't believe that anything so abominable should exist. It kind of reminds me of H.P. Lovecraft in reverse, where um, it's the humans looking into the world of, say, the Elder Things, or um, looking at a Shogoth or something like that. I'm sorry, this is kind of inside references here, if you haven't read Lovecraft. It's just uh, he deals with alienness, extreme alienness. And um, the implication is, of course, there's more than one way of looking at even the most pleasant of things. Um, and that something ordinary, pleasant, and nice, and calming, uh, through a different set of perceptions, could be exactly the opposite. Uh, it all depends on what's in your head already when you're perceiving things. I'll just uh, go to the quote now. Um, he's just sitting in his little cabin by the sea, very nice little cabin, and he's dozed off and um, suddenly wakes up. I snapped my eyes open, feeling the constriction of my heart. The sensation subsided a little, but not entirely. I was looking at the book, seeing the print and diagrams with my own eyes perfectly normal, everyday experience, and I was also seeing it from a different, lower angle, angle, and seeing it with other eyes. Seeing not a book, but an alien thing, something of monstrous shape and ominous intent. I raised my hand slowly to my face, catching an eerie vision of my living room turned into a horror house. I screamed. There were eyes peering up at me through slits in the flesh of my fingers. 
and even as I watched, the flesh was dilating, retracting, or retreating, as they pushed their mindless way up to the surface. But that was not what, what, what made me scream. I had looked into my own face and seen a monster. <laughs> um, yeah. How much of what we see is projection? Um, it's interesting that uh, he's called the novel I Am the Doorway, and, you know, it's written back in the early 70s, I think, and, you know, the doors, the doors of perception. Um, it's an interesting uh, sort of allusion, I guess, to either Aldous Huxley or the band The Doors, um, where what we see is often more to do with what we project onto things than what is actually there. Um, we can see a strange, bizarre alien universe um, when we're looking at our own universe if we can if we've got the imagination to sort of change gears in our own minds I look at the house that I live in it's a rather quaint cute little house a little cabin really and I wonder how my cats see it sometimes or my little son what does it look like to them or even what does it look like to another human being Another person who understands what a chair is, what a couch is, what a TV screen is. What biases are they projecting onto it? Does the, for example, does the couch look inviting? Does it look cold and functional? Um, does it bring up uh, associations? Maybe it looks like um, one night where they slept on a couch and woke up with an excruciating pain in their back. Or... Perhaps it reminds them of the couch in which they lost their virginity in a very pleasant way. Um, there, there's an infinite number of associations that we project onto everything. And there's far more to perception than the information that comes in uh, via our senses. Um, I, don't, I don't think there is any way to compare these two, but... I'd like to, I'd like to imagine what it would be if I could actually see things without all the projection uh, taking place. Um, that's, uh, I often think that that would be the version of turning around, as I say, in the moving car that's driving up the street. Uh, instead of looking backwards through the rear view window, through the rear window of the car, and seeing the world go by this way you turn around and you look directly into the face of <laughs> becoming. Um, and, you know, Nietzsche says that we we alter that by projecting things onto reality simply because the horror of becoming is so overwhelming that we would be, we'd have our minds blasted out if we actually saw it. Um, Aldous Huxley and the Doors of Perception, perception uh, Heaven and Hell, um, hints at this or alludes to it or even you know, actually says it, uh, if you can actually, in, in his case, chemically alter the the uh, projections that you put on reality itself, um, what you see might shock you to your very core. The bad trip, I guess. Um, what if you, you know, what if you could do that without dropping acid? What if you could do it in a disciplined fashion? Well, as I say, I'm into tantra, and that's what they say you can do. You can teach yourself how to do that. That's neither here nor there, though. Um, the issue that I'd like to point out is um, things like value. When you're placing value on reality, uh, you are the one that's doing it. It's um, If you're putting emphasis or bias or anything like that, or if there is actual value on any of the attributes that you see in anything out there that you're perceiving, you are projecting that. Uh, Stephen King's juxtaposition was, in my experience, very apropos. Uh, he, uh, here's a guy in a very pleasant surrounding, uh, sandy beachside cabin. Uh, I think it's in Florida, but it could have been in New England where he likes to write. And, you know, one of these quaint seaside towns that's actually quite civilized with, you know, doctors and policemen and stores and everything. You know, you're not really that far from civilization, but you kind of are because it's a nice place. And here's some aliens zapped in there looking at it like, it, like they've just been dropped into the hits the depths of hell itself. It's it, it's a, this horrific place with corners and geometry that just looks terrible and it's inhabited by monsters and danger and 
alienness and, and things that I just want to kill because they're so horrible and threatening and they shouldn't even exist. Um, that's what he uh, that's what he puts into the minds of the aliens, the Venusians, who are looking through his eyes. They're looking through his eyes, but they're the eyes that they have put on his hands. So they're kind of his eyes and their eyes, and they're projecting all the value uh, that they um, that they place on everything uh, into his mind because he can see through their perceptions, the doorway of perception, he can see their biases, their value, he can see their projections onto everything, he can perceive their perceptions, something which I've often said is almost certainly impossible. But, you know, in science fiction, nothing is impossible. Um, what does that say about our evaluation of the world? Uh, in Pyro's hangout last week, we said, what would make the world good enough? How do you answer that? 